Hi everyone. Good to see you all again. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Firstly, I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity to stand in His presence. And this morning we had a good communion, we had a good participation, we all together as the saints. It is wonderful that we could able to meet and uh, remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what He has done for us. We always remember Him, not only on Sundays but every day. It's good to remember Him. I uh, just wanted to introduce my family and myself to you guys. I think most of you know my name is Sam. My wife's name is Shweta. We are blessed with three kids. Carol, Clement, with someone. Kelly. <laughs> just wanted to see you. Before I go further, I just wanted to give thanks to God and then we will go further. Our gracious God, loving Heavenly Father. We thank you once again for this giving a wonderful opportunity to us. First day of the week, our Lord's Day, that we could be able to come into your presence to give our whole heart of worship and thanks. We remember that we love to know Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what He has done in our lives. Lord, once again, this afternoon, the servant is standing before your presence to share the testimony how I have encountered my Jesus. Lord, please help me that the rest of the time we we'll leave it to you, Lord. Please fill up with the Holy Spirit and help us to share this testimony. We ask this by the most precious name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Before I go further, just wanted to sing All to Jesus I Surrender. Anyone could play the piano? Please. And will stand and sing this hymn.
can read Matthew 11:28 Matthew 11:28 <clears throat> Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you the rest. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you the rest. This is the word that spoke to me 23 years ago. I'll come back to this word. As I was born in a nominal Christian family. When I say nominal Christian family, like they, only, they used to go only to the churches on the Christmas or the New Year. So our family is something like a Hindu background, but not fully Hindu or not fully Christian. My family was like that, but as far as I know, my grandpa used to pray for us. But... I came to know that he was not baptized or he was not a born again Christian. Among all my family members, my mother is the only one who believed in Jesus and took baptism when she was 14, 15. I'm not sure what is the number, correct number, but she was the only one. She was regular, regularly attending to worship on a Lord's Day. And she had that burden to pray for all of our family members that we should be saved. Because coming from a Hindu background, they used to offer ideal worship, but we were not doing that ideal worship. But at the same time, they were not a complete Christians or complete born again Christians. But my mother was the person, first person who believed in Jesus and she came forward and she's been praying for every one of us. Today, if I look at back, I think the whole family of Guntupalis are, are uh, believing in God, born again Christians, and they are running a church in India. It's a great blessing that through one, many of, many of the, uh, my family members came to God. And among them, I was also one of the person, I would say, because my mother used to take me to church on every Sunday to clean the church. So slowly I started going to church on Sundays and uh, Saturdays, Sundays with my mother. At the same time, my dad did not believe in God or he, he was not coming to church. But slowly, I think the prayers were answered. Daddy also joined the Sundays meetings. As a family, we were going together. I used to observe my mother very carefully. When we sleep, she was not sleeping at all in the midnight. She's been praying. She's been crying and praying, praying. I did not know why she was crying that much at that point of time. Now, when I got married, when I have kids, I've realized. I've realized why she was crying like that at that point of time. Also, I remember one verse where Jesus won his ways to Calvary. He speaks to all the women. Yet he turns to them and says, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for your, yourselves and your children. That is the word that, that is the verse that I could able to recollect at, at now when I have kids. I was regularly attending the Sunday meetings, cottage meetings, prayer meetings, but never given my heart to Jesus. Always thinking why I got a lot of questions in my mind. Why should I believe in Jesus? What do I get if I believe in Jesus? My mother, I was regularly, my mother used to take me to church like, we have to go. There is no other way. On Sundays, my dad and my mom, we are going to church, we are going. So we are going. It is not with our intention, like, oh, I have to go to church. I have to go to Lord's Day on the Sundays. It is not coming from my heart. But it is only because, okay, dad who is asking me to come, mommy is asking me to come, we'll go. That's what happened. A lot of questions in my mind. So days were passing on, but my life did not change. I was very famous. I was very famous in my school. For what? For what? Because I'm not good. Any complaints, my name will be there. Anything that happened there, my name will be there. 
So <laughs> every Saturday, my, my, they used to get a, we used to have a um, parent teachers meeting. I believe you should have now here too. So <laughs> my dad says, no, I'm not going to come to meeting. <laughs> I'm not going to come to your meeting because a lot of complaints, a lot of complaints. Yet yeah, you're seeing the one coin, one side of the Sam, but before coming to Christ, completely different. Wherever I go, I used to fight, I used to uh, hit. Everywhere, my, I'm, I'm popular. I'm popular in my family, I'm popular in my school. So that was my life. That was my life. I still, I can't remember, like, pe person like me, God loved us so much. Why did he love me so much? He had a purpose in my life. One day, on the 2nd of the 11th, I was hearing the gospel in the evening. This is the word that we read, 11.28. Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you the rest. This is the word that the pastor was speaking on that particular point of time. I said to myself, I heard this quote many times. I'm not going to listen to this time. Well, my parents can bring me to the church and leave me in the church, but they can't take my attention off my heart. If I have to listen to word, I have to give my heart. I have to, it is my responsibility, right? Parents can only bring into the church, but they cannot bring Jesus into my life. That was the question that I had, and I just ignored that night, ignored that night. But while he was giving altar call, he was saying, he was saying very loudly, where will you go after your death? Where will you go after your death? Before that altar call, he has mentioned one particular point. He shared a testimony about a sister uh, who is going to gospel crusades continuously for five days. Uh, she is saying she is hearing the gospel every night. She is talking to herself. Okay, tomorrow I'll think about believing in God. Tomorrow I'll think about it, whether I have to uh, believe in Jesus or not. That was the word. One day, first day happened, second day happened, third day happened. On the fourth day, what she said to herself, okay, she has written in her Bible, tomorrow, I think I'll give my heart to Jesus, tomorrow. And then she left the message that that evening, unfortunately, she had an accident, she lost her life. She lost her life. And pastor was saying to, this to me at an altar call time. That, that pointed me, I think I have to, I've attended very carefully at that point of time. And then he is questioning us, where will you go after your death? And he is saying, whoever believes in Jesus, they can go to heaven. And who does not believe, they go to hell. Well, this particular sister, she has almost confessed, but she is waiting for tomorrow. But tomorrow did not come. She lost her life. That made me to think, and I said to myself, I think Holy Spirit is speaking to me at that point of time. And I said to myself, no, I want to leave. I want to leave. John 4, 16. John 4, 16. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So this is the word again. He has brought me into my attention. And I heard about this. This made me to think about my life, heaven or hell. As I said to you guys, Holy Spirit was speaking to me on that particular night. I lifted my hand. I went to the, I went, um, I came to the pastor, and then pastor spoke to me about. He showed me a couple of verses, and made me to confess my sins. And that day was my salvation day. Is the second of the eleventh, two thousand, while I was studying my grade ten. So I believed in Jesus, in grade ten. Dear brothers and sisters, is it's your responsibility? To gain a salvation to heaven, right? You need to work on it. Also, I realized on that day, salvation is not a thing or an item to buy in a market. If available, anyone can buy it, right? Anyone can buy it. I realized on that day, my parents were can, my parents can afford to buy me. If I ask them to buy me a car, they can buy me. If I ask them a good house, they can buy me. But they cannot buy me a ticket to heaven. They cannot buy me a ticket to heaven. It is an individual responsibility of any person that they have to gain it by themselves. Gain it by themselves. 
On that day, I realized that point, and I shared this testimony after a month or two in the same church that, where I was going. Dear brothers and sisters, it is your responsibility, as I said. Ephesians, second chapter, eight verses again. Let us turn to this chapter, Ephesians. This morning, I think I read this particular second chapter, eight verses. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. As I said, this is a gift of God. We, shall, we can't boast ourselves. And this morning in the prayer meeting also, we have realized how we have received it. When I was reading this chapter, second chapter, I could see my life in, my life in it and decided to live for Christ. As Paul says, 1 Timothy, 1st chapter, verses 12 and 13, even though I was once blemisher and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Even my situation is also the same. I'm not worthy at all to come into his presence. I'm a sinner. I'm a liar. But Jesus loved me so much and died for me on the cross to give me a new life, to give me a new life. I took water baptism on 30th of the 12th, 2000, while studying grade 10. I could able to see happiness in my parents and also myself. Before that, there is no happiness in the family. There is no happiness in the family. But from that day onwards, they could able to see the happiness. Lord brought us peace, happiness in our families. As a teenager, there are so many temptations in this sinful world. But if you lean on God, God is there for you all the time. I finished my grade 10, grade 12, and my graduation in civil engineering. I went to UK to do my master's in construction project management. God helped me to finish successfully, and I returned to India in 2010. There's a lot of stories to tell in UK, but because of the time factor, I am not going further there. But literally, there was a lot of temptations in UK because that is a new place for me. Where we were, I was there in India for all of my studies, but moving to Western countries, Western culture, could not able to absorb, but God really helped me to come out of all those situations. And he could able to stand. He made me to stand at that particular time. My parents were, after coming back to India, my parents were looking for me, for my life partner. Looked a bit different, yeah? <laughs> yes, in India, we had the tradition that my parents are looking for my life partner. It's not me, but, <laughs> but I believe that, I believe that it is God's will. As Adam, for Adam, who prepared God prepared Eve. I believe that. And uh, they have seen Shweta. They told me, ah, you have to go and see her. I saw her. Initially, nah, we are not for each other. But after a month or two, after praying together, I think God made us united and we got married in the, on the 30th of the 8th, 2010. So I became a family man. All these 20 years of my spiritual life, there are so many ups and downs, so many ups and downs, but Lord is always helping me and strengthening me through scriptures. Christian life is not a broad way, right? You know that. It's a narrow way. There will be a lot of twists and turns, but we need to go through them. For example, cross of gold. Just wanted to say gold. It goes through a lot of testing. It's burnt in fire. It's filtered. Finally, pure gold comes out of it, right? Pure gold comes out of it, shining. I believe if you go through this, your personal relationship with God will become very strong. I was working for myself as a, in my own company as a civil engineer and also the builder. As Shweta is working in Oracle company as a software engineer. So our secure lives was very strong because I have my own company. 
I was acting as a builder, working for myself. Shweta is working. God blessed us, Carol, in the year 2012. And uh, Caleb in 2015, that's in India. But again, the blessed one, Clement, he was born in 2020 in Australia. He is a citizen. <laughs> we are not citizens. But now we become citizens. We are praying from a couple of years uh, to move to Australia. Because I was in England for a couple of years, I feel there is something that I have to learn. And we've been praying for two years. Finally, the date has come and God, we have decided to come to Melbourne in 2016. We have come to Australia, leaving parents, relatives, jobs. We left everything behind. What we wanted to see is, we wanted to see how faith will be working in a Christian life. Yes, if you are at home, back home, we have everything. We don't have to think, we don't have to worry about anything. But when we are away from our parents, when we are away from our everything, then we feel how, how God is going to help us. We wanted to experience that. That is the particular point that we have decided, okay, we have to come. And we made the decision as a family. When we were coming to Melbourne, we don't know anyone in Melbourne. Literally speaking, we don't know anyone in Melbourne. But God always has a plan. If we depend on Him, He provides the provision. From nowhere, one of, I would say, Melbourne Telugu Christian Fellowship is a fellowship that is happening in, all over in Melbourne. One of the brother came forward. He is a stranger to me. We are, I, I was a stranger to them too. But he gave us a shelter only because I'm a Christian. Only because he loves the same God that I worship. So that's God's love is always there among the Christian brethren. And he opened the door for us. We were there with him for a couple of months, a couple of weeks, and then we moved to a house. Again, difficult part. There were, that's where we left everything. But when we are coming here, we got nothing here. Like we started our career again. To find a house also, it's very difficult. All the applications were getting no, we are not giving you a job. We are not giving you the houses because you don't have jobs. I said, no, no, don't worry about the jobs. I have money. But no, no, no. We need security. So one day, when I did the inspection for one house, I just wanted to share this particular point. Uh, how This particular point, yes. I went to see the house. I went 10 minutes before for the inspection. I went near to the house and say, saw everything, did the application. I was standing before the house and there was a person, he's an Indian guy. He was standing and uh, trimming some trees in front of the house. My heart was beating, My Holy Spirit was speaking to me straight away. No, you go and speak to him, go and speak to him, go and speak to him. I went, finally, after a couple of minutes, I went, I said, hi, hello, how are you? He said also, hi, how are you? He asked me a question, where are you from? I said, I am from India. I know that you are an Indian. <laughs> I know that you are Indian, but which, which part? I said, I am from Hyderabad. The next word that he spoke to me is, so you are a Telugu guy. He replied back to me in my own language. Literally speaking, I don't know whether, at that point of time I was jumping almost like two to three meters high. Not physically, but spiritually I was going like I was flying in the sky because he was speaking Telugu to me. Then uh, I asked him, are you a tenant here? No, 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 I am the owner. Wow, I'm speaking to the owner. Then all the people are coming for the inspections and then I'm speaking to the owner. Then he said to me, no, no, come, let's go back. And then he was asking me all the questions. I said, this is what happened, this is what happened. I've done so many applications, but no one is responding. No one is giving me a house to leave. And then he said, don't worry. If I don't give it to you, who can, I have to give it to you. He's a, he's a Hindu, Hindu background, Hindu guy. I told him that I'm a Christian. I told him that we go to church. But he said, don't worry, I'll look after you. And I did the applications. I was not hearing anything from the uh, agents. So that he gave me a phone number, I called him again. What happened, what happened to my application? Then he called and uh, asked the agents, how many applications I have received? You got five, but one was, it's not applicable because they don't have jobs. So that application is not even sent to the owner. 
But uh, that owner said to him, no, 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 give me that file, give me that application. I want to give my house to that gentleman. See, think, I think, for God, for me, I think, one verse from Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible, Matthew 19, 16. Truly amazing God. He is an amazing God. He was helping us in each and every situation. That's how I got my first house, without anything. But later on, God helped us. Uh, he gave us a job, part-time job, myself. And also that again, one more problem started. Shweta has got us offer in Sydney that she has to go back to Sydney with the kids I have to keep here. But God gave us peace in our heart, okay. She decided I'll go there for a weekly work, five days a week, and then come back on the weekend. That's how she did for uh, two months. And after the third month, um, the company has given her work from home and asked her to come once in a month. After a month, and that has been changed to, she said, no, 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 you don't have to come anywhere to Sydney anymore. You just stay at Melbourne, stay with your family. You don't have to come. And that they gave work from home option. Again, for God, uh, with, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I would claim this word again and again in our lives. As we started working from home, I found my professional job in construction. And uh, one year, after one year working with that company, I moved to Metricon. After working five years with Metricon, God helped me to get my builder's license. I have started Clement Homes in November 2022, as you guys know. What a journey, I've, I could say, yeah, after coming to Melbourne, it is a great experience. We have learned how faith works if we depend on Him. Lord is always there to help us. Please continue to pray for our family uh, so we can be a blessing to others. Also, I wanted to thank all the, uh, all the elders for giving me this opportunity. And thank you all for listening to my testimony so patiently. Thank you.